serious competitor that aims for the top of the middle class, the Nubia M2. Can it conquer the middle class market with its amazing display, Qualcomm chipset and double main camera setup? Let's see together! Today we're testing a device made by a brand that is relatively unknown here, the Nubia M2. It is a middle class device that brings an excellent low profile design, Qualcomm chipset, double main camera and AMOLED display. Of course, just as all the other Chinese devices, what sets this one apart from the devices of more prominent manufacturers is its affordable price. If you choose to buy this device off one of the online shops, the price is lower compared to, for example, the Samsung J5 2017. And Nubia with its components provides much more than the Samsung. We are testing the Nubia M2 in black gold color option, and next to it also available is the champagne gold version. Inside the factory box of the Nubia M2, we can find user manuals, Nubia fast charging adapter, USB Type-C cable and a SIM tray tool. There's all that's necessary in order to conquer the middle class, so let's see together how Nubia managed to put everything together. Perhaps the biggest role for some users is played by the display. Nubia chose a 5.5 inch capacitive display for the M2. It is a Full HD 1080p AMOLED display with the aspect ratio of 16 to 9, which means that we have 401 ppi pixel density. This resolution looks amazing on a 5.5 inch panel and it offers great sharpness while the number of pixels is still reasonable so the GPU won't have too many issues running all those pixels, but more on that a little bit later. We had a chance to see AMOLED displays mostly on Samsung devices and they, as a rule, bring more vivid colors with very deep blacks and excellent contrast. All of this is also true for the display built into the Nubia M2. Since it is standard nowadays, M2's display is also capable of showing up to 16.7 million colors. If you for some reason do have an issue with perhaps too pronounced colors, Nubia offers an option in the settings menu to adjust color reproduction, everything from colder to warmer colors. M2 also has an ambient light sensor that will adjust the brightness of the panel automatically when in auto mode. Maximum brightness is pretty good and the auto mode on direct sunlight offers great brightness results. The screen is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass, however there is no information which generation of the protection is used. Something that can definitely push you towards getting your hands on this device is its hardware. For the M2, Nubia opted for a Qualcomm chipset that perfectly suits the middle class in which the M2 is placed. It is the Snapdragon 625, a 14 nanometer chipset which we could see countless times in many other manufacturers' devices. It is consisted of 8 Cortex A53 cores clocked at 2 GHz. Next to the octa-core processor, the GPU built into this device is Adreno 506. The GPU is perfectly capable of smoothly running any material in Full HD 1080p resolution. Games have a steady number of FPS and screen animations also show no drops in performance at all. What is very good in the price range of the Nubia M2 is the memory built into it. 64GB of internal storage with 4GB of LPDDR RAM. A huge advantage is that this device has a hybrid slot, which means that you can expand your storage memory via a microSD card by up to 200GB, while 4GB of RAM should be enough for any kind of multitasking. The fingerprint scanner is also available, and it is implemented into the home button. It is very fast and precise. Nubia M2 reproduces mono sound, and the speaker that does the job is located on the bottom of the device, to the left of the Type-C connector. The device also supports Dolby Atmos system, so overall sound reproduction quality is above average. The system gives a pretty good impression. All tasks are executed perfectly smoothly with no lag while the system itself is clear of bloatware. A good way to show what the Nubia M2 is capable of is to run it through benchmarks. And Tutu showed the score of 62,770, whereas Geekbench graded single core performance with 853 points, multi core performance with 4,217, and compute with 3,397. Perhaps the biggest disadvantage in this whole story about hardware and software is the Android version pre installed on this device. It is the Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. It, however, looks nothing like pure Android. The UI is built by Nubia and it is called Nubia UI. The M2 runs Nubia UI version 4.0.
No software updates have been announced, so there is the sad possibility that despite very good hardware that is more than capable of running Nougat, the M2 will stay on the Marshmallow system. Security patches are dated to July 2017. One of the functions that we would like to point out is add gestures, which will enable you to execute different actions with different interactions with the edges of your device. For example, if you pinch your device with two fingers on both sides of the device at the same time and swipe up or down, you will be able to regulate the brightness of the panel, or if you tap the edge twice, you will return to the previous step. Level of details put into building the UI and the attention to them is clearly seen through the screenshot interface. Honestly, options here are countless. There's an option to take the classic screenshot in any shape you want, rectangular, circular, heart shape, free. There is long screenshot that lets you capture the screenshots while you're scrolling, and even screen recording that lets you record the screen in 840 by 480p resolution at 60fps. Nubia M2 can boast with a double main camera setup, just as most other modern smartphones. We have one RGB and one monochrome sensor, and both have the resolution of 13 megapixels. Both sensors have the same specifications, f2.2 aperture, while each individual pixel is 1.25 micrometers. Both sensors are equipped with face detection autofocus. To the right of the sensors, there's a double two-tone LED flash. Other camera options are geotagging, touch focus, face detection, HDR, and panorama. Nubia calls their camera interface NeoVision, and the current version is 6.5. Several photo modes are available, camera family, pro, photo, video record, and portrait. You don't have an option to manually change the resolution of photos per se, but you can do it through changing the aspect ratio of the photos, so this way we have 16 to 9, 4 to 3, and 1 to 1. Daytime photos made by the Nubia M2 are pretty good. When we say pretty good, we mean that Nubia captures a lot of details with good color reproduction, but it suffers from a huge level of noise, especially in shadowy places. Focus speed is great, as is the time needed to store photos. Nighttime photos are somewhat poorer. Although on their website Nubia promotes 3D noise reproduction, the noise is more than just noticeable in nighttime photos, and also a lot of details are lost, while the color reproduction remains very good. Sadly, although it has two cameras, optical zoom is not available since it doesn't have the telephoto lens. The pro mode is also here, and it lets you adjust the shutter speed, white balance, ISO values, and focus distance. The portrait mode is of course here, and it will make the photos look like the ones made by professional DSLR cameras with excellent depth of field effect. The M2 does a good job distinguishing between the object of the photo and the background, although it is not on par with more expensive devices. The sheer number of options available within the camera interface of the Nubia M2 is a clear advantage, and it can be easily said that this is a device suited for users that love their photos. Video mode brings a real treat, 4K video shooting. Maximum resolution is 3840 by 2160 pixels at 30 FPS, and these videos look great on the display of the M2. However, as is the case with photos, in our opinion there is too much noise. Still, just the capability to shoot 4K videos is a remarkable feature in a mid-range device, and even better is 1080p Full HD video recording at 60 FPS. Stable 60 FPS frame rate looks perfectly smooth, but still with far fewer details compared to 4K videos. Of course, there are still options to take 1080p and 720p videos at 30 FPS. All videos are stored in MP4 format. Time lapse photos are available within the camera family section, as are slow motion videos in HD 720p resolution at 120 FPS. Going on to the front side of the device, we have a 16 megapixel sensor that captures an 80 degree angle. The aperture is f2.0. Photos made by the front facing camera are excellent. Put simply, these photos have plenty of details, the colors are nicely saturated, and the dynamic range is up to the job. It can take Full HD 1080p videos and store them in MP4 format. Nubia M2 is a 4G dual SIM device. Here we have a hybrid slot which means that it can house either two nano SIM cards or if you choose to use a microSD card instead of one SIM card, a microSD and a nano SIM card. The device uses a reversible USB Type-C connector version 1.0 for charging and data transfer. The 3.5mm headphone port is still here and we love that Nubia chose to keep it. 
It is located on the bottom of the device to the right of the Type-C connector. Lack of the NFC system and FM radio is however a definite disadvantage. Maximum download speed in 4G networks is 150 megabits per second, while the maximum upload speed is 50 megabits per second. Why stop now with all the good things? The battery of the M2 has the capacity of 3630 mAh, which is a great thing, especially taking into account that the Snapdragon 625 is a power-saving chipset. The lithium polymer battery is not removable, but we are used to that since we can nowadays see removable batteries only in the lowest sections of the market. As we have said, USB Type-C is used for charging and data transfer, and fast charging is also available. Nubia calls it Neo Charge, and they claim that it is very safe since it reduces the voltage itself inside the adapter, which reduces heating up of the device during charging, while still performing fast charging. Time needed to fully charge the device using the stock charging adapter is around 90 minutes, while one full charge with constant Wi-Fi use, YouTube, social network apps, and around 2 hours of gameplay will provide around 6 hours of screen on time. Nubia M2 is our choice and we stand behind this. Details are everything and they are exactly what makes a device complete and Nubia is filled with them. These details are exactly what makes this device special through software and hardware and they set the M2 apart from the sea of pretty much the same devices. NFC is a huge disadvantage and we would also like to see Android 7.0 Nougat update with its new camera algorithms which would greatly improve the noise in photos. Still, we think that the Nubia M2 completely justifies its price. Do you like the Nubia M2? We'd like to see your opinion in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions or you would like to see a specific device being reviewed, feel free to write to us either here or on our Facebook page. If you liked our review, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook and sit comfortably as we are working hard on new material for you.